Hey buddy, Sunnuts Guy here. Hope you're having an awesome day so far and welcome back for more Dawncraft. In this episode of this video, I'm going to show you about enchanting. Now, Apotheosis enchanting overhauls a bunch of stuff and it gets a little bit complex, but once you understand it, it's actually fairly simple ish so i'll try and get you to a point of understanding as quickly as possible as simply as possible as concisely as possible things we're going to cover is how it works overall and what changes there are certain blocks that you should aim for mid and end game builds so blocks you should aim for at certain different stages of the game and builds that you can kind of do as you progress we're going to cover different tomes and how they can be used to enchant effectively alongside the library block, which is an insanely powerful block. It's a little bit expensive, but it's insanely powerful. And then how to enchant most effectively in terms of the levels that it's going to cost to do your enchanting and how to get the best enchants. We'll try and do that as concisely as possible. Let's go. Now, I'm also going to try and make this linear in the sense of the deliver the information throughout the video in a way that is useful to you. Sort of the, the information that's useful earlier in your playthrough at the beginning, like right this very moment, and the information that's going to be later on in your playthrough more at the end of the video. So, first things first, and, and, and this is sort of slightly not relevant to this, and I'll explain how all this works shortly, but this is the first sort of stage of enchanting that I did. So, right, you're, you're early on, you can get pretty decent weapons and items from looting dungeons before you unlock the anvil or before you unlock the enchanting table, before you have enough experience or the items to create good enchanting setups. You can also buy very decent gear from uh, wandering traders that you might want to either not wear and utilize the enchants from, and some of this information I'm going to show you right here might be more useful to you before you can actually do a proper enchanting setup. So first things first, we've got a weapon here with some decent enchants and stuff, but perhaps this is not the weapon that we want to use because there's much better weapons than diamond swords as an example. So a couple of useful bits of information here. We've got different, two different types of cause, cobwebs. Prismatic, uh, prismatic cobweb will remove, uh, will remove curses, cobweb and prismarine, and cobwebs will remove all enchants. So say, for example, you wanted to get an item, but you didn't want the enchants that were on it, you can use that, and that will remove all enchants, and the prismatic cobweb will remove the curse, so you can just use the weapon with the enchants as it is. A little bit expensive in terms of levels, but uh, it is very useful. Now, say, for example, let's remove the curse there. Say, for example, this has enchants that you want, but you don't want it on this weapon. You want to put it on a different weapon. There's the Tome of Scrapping. Tome of Scrapping is incredibly useful, particularly early, particularly early game. Tome of Scrapping is actually not too hard to make. It's just an anvil surrounded by books. Now, you put that in an anvil alongside the weapon uh, or the piece of armor that you want to remove enchants from, and it will remove 50% rounded up of the enchantments on that item at random. So we've got three here. It will remove two of those enchants at random, and it will cost 10 levels per enchant that it's removing. So if there's only one thing on here, it would be guaranteed to remove that one thing. Great. If there's three things on here, well, if there's two things on here, it will remove one of the two things and cost 10 levels. If there's three things on here, it will remove two of the three things and cost 20 levels. If there was five things, it would remove three of them and cost 30 levels. That makes sense. You can obviously then take this book and then do your own enchanting with that. Happy days. Just wanted to cover that really quickly because that was more useful to me before I ended up doing any kind of enchanting with an actually enchant en enchanting setup here. Now, to cover the basics of enchanting with the Apotheosis mod, and you'll see as soon as you go into your enchanting table that there is a lot of different stuff here. One nice change is that the enchanting table will actually hold your lapis now, so you don't need to keep refilling it. You can just leave it in there. Great. So here's where things get a little bit complicated with the enchanting, and I'm going to try and explain this as simply as possible. I'm not going to cover every single little detail as the video will get very long, and I want to do this, provide you the information that you need to do good enchanting as concisely as possible. So, a turn out determines the available enchantment levels. Enchantments can get up to a very, very high level. A turn out essentially is what in determines what level, i.e. 30, 60, 45, the maximum level that your enchantments can require. And these essentially will be locked through stages of the game. Like the nether will allow you to, uh, certain blocks you can create from the nether items will allow you to get up to 30 Eterna. And you'll need to be able to go to the end to be able to get the maximum of 50 Eterna. So there's a maximum amount of Eterna that you can have per stage of the game. And that'll be why there might have different builds and setups for your enchanting setup at different stages of the game. Quanta is interesting and slightly confusing. Quanta 
increases the variance of the potential end chance. High quanta means that you have a uh, you have a chance of getting a very very positive end chance in terms of additional end chance or high level end chance. Lower quanta means that there's lower variance and lower potential for pog a single end chance with having like three, four, five different end chance on a single weapon or armor. However, the higher the quanta, it also has a chance of reversing that and being negative. So high quanta means it could be very good enchant or it could be a very bad enchant, potentially even giving you curses. You see there it says rectification lessens the negative effect. So there's something called rectification and blocks that give you rectification. And if your rectification is at 100%, that means you completely nullify all potential for negative effects, which means if you have 100% quanta and 100% rectification, you can only get positive effects from a varying degree uh, but there's no chance for the negative effects. So rectification is very good alongside quanta. Arcana makes rare enchantments more common. I.e., the higher the arcana, the more likely you are to get the better rare enchants. Right, when I first heard all that, it sounded very confusing to me. So I'll try and make it a little bit clearer as we go. Standard basic bookshelves give you only Eterna and give you plus one Eterna up to a maximum of 15. Honestly, I didn't actually do any enchanting and I probably wouldn't recommend doing much enchanting or any enchanting until you can go to the nether and you can be able to make hell shelves. Basic hell shelves give you Eterna plus 1.5 up to a max of 22.5 and Quanta plus 1.5. You can enchant hell shelves to become infused hell shelves, which give you more Eterna, more Quanta. You can create blazing hell shelves, which gives you minus enchanting clues essentially enchanting clues outside of eterna quanta and arcana are a fourth element enchanting clues the plus one enchanting clues will mean you will be able to see more enchants on that specific weapon so you'll be able to see that instead of just seeing the top one enchant you'll see two enchants if you had plus two you'll see three enchants if you had minus one you'll see no enchants it will still do the enchants you just don't know what they'll be or you will have better information on what they will be. Going through each of these would take a long time. I would essentially familiarize yourself by having a look at this, typing in, you know, Eterna, you can type in Quanta, you can type in Arcana, and you can see all the blocks that will give you Eterna, Quanta, Arcana, etc. Now, essentially, you'll want to max out your Eterna for any given stage of the game. You want to get as high Quanta as possible, you want to get as high Rectification as possible, and you want to get as high Arcana as possible. That's essentially the basis of it. So once you get to the nether stage, the highest Eterna that you can have is a maximum of 30 using glowing hell shelves or blazing hell shelves. Wouldn't necessarily recommend blazing hell shelves because they reduce your enchanting clues. I would recommend, uh, and I used glowing hell shelves. To create a glowing hell shelf, you'll need glowstone and an infused hell shelf. To infuse a hell shelf, you'll need a hell shelf and to enchant that. Hell shelves are used with blaze rods and potions of regeneration. These take gas tears and obviously blaze rods are uh, from blazes. I would highly recommend having a drink me mob farm for both ghasts and blazes to get the gas tears to get the blaze rods required because you will need quite a few of these and it's much easier than going out and farming them in the nether. I've made a video on how to farm uh, mobs and XP, which will be used for the enchanting as well, with drink me and Ars Nouveau, and I will link that in the description below. So let's quickly show you how infusing works. To infuse a hell shelf, you'll need at least 45 level enchantment, which means you'll need to have your Eterna up to at least 22.5. And you can see that with the hell shelf, you can get a maximum of 22.5 Eterna. So usually to infuse, you'll need to have maxed out your current stage to be able to get to the next stage, to be able to get to the next stage if that makes sense. So let's get rid of all these basic shelves. And at this point, we now have 22.5 Eterna, and this is all just using basic hell shelves. If I remove this one, you'll see it says 21, and I put it back, it's now 22.5. So now at this point, I should be able to go in here and create infusion. If I don't have the 22.5, uh, it'll go in and it'll say something like melding. I don't know why it gives you the chance to enchant it with melding. It doesn't really make any sense. But if you see the enchantment there says melding, you don't have the right amount of Eterna. Make sure you place your block down, get it up to the maximum level of Eterna, and then it should say infusion. This requires you to be at level 45. Excuse me, sir, how did you get up here? <laughs> so if you're using a backpack, and this I would highly recommend it because it'll allow you to control the levels that you're using. You want to adjust this to level 45, take the level so you have exactly 45 levels. Put your hell shelf in, do the infusion, now you have an infused hell shelf.
You will need quite a few infused hell shelves because they're used in a number of different crafting recipes, including the glowing hell shelf, which is just a better shelf, as well as the library. So basically, stage one of your enchanting progress is going to be get to the point where you have enough hell shelves where you can get to 22.5 and enough experience that you can start infusing additional hell shelves. If you wanted to start doing this before the nether, although you probably won't really have the experience to do so, if you wanted to do this before the nether, you can actually create sea shelves as well. Sea shelves are an option. Sea shelves require prismarine blocks, water, and puffer fish. They will also get you up to the 22.5 Eterna. The uh, infused version will get you to the 27. And the crystalline sea shelf will get you to the 30, which is the same as the glowing hell shelf, which I'm about to recommend. So if you wanted to get to your 22.5, you could use a variety of these shelves. That would also be an option. As you can see, the sea shelves here give you Arcana, and the hell shelves give you Quanta. I personally wanted to get my Arcana as high as I could while also getting my Quanta very high. So I went for the glowing hell shelves instead of the sea shelf options because Arcana is higher on that than the sea shelf option. The sea shelf option uh, equivalent option has plus four Quanta and plus two Arcana. I wanted to have a higher uh, uh, Arcana so that I get a higher chance of rarer end chance. Also, at this stage, you can't get as high rectification to nullify the negative effects of high quanta. So high quanta is a little bit more of a gamble, although it's still good to have. So as soon as I was able, I replaced some of my hell shelves with glowing hell shelves up to the point where I could up to the point where I could have a 30 maximum. You don't need to replace. You can just add them on and I can have a maximum there of 30 Eterna. But if you want to maximize your Arcana and your Quanta for the Eterna available, you can obviously replace these as well. And you'll be getting higher Quanta, higher Arcana. In fact, you can fill the whole ring if you had the resources to do so. And that'll give you the most value. You can even fill the corners in here. So this is your maximum working space, FYI. And you can fill this as much as possible to increase your Quanta and Arcana as much as possible, even though your Eterna won't go up further than what the current block you're using allows you to do. If you ever want to see what blocks increase Quanta and or Arcana, you can see that actually uh, you can increase that with uh, your Quanta with uh, skulls, with their skeleton skulls being the best. So if you ran out of the ability to put bookshelves, but you wanted to increase your Quanta further, you can put down wither skeleton skulls or other skulls. And with Arcana, you could increase that a little bit by putting some candles down as well, if you didn't have enough resources to fill it out with bookshelves. So if you had the resources, this would be a pretty decent uh, mid-game setup. I mean, you can delete some of these hell shelves and replace them for more glowing hell shelves even further to get your Arcana maxed out. So the Arcana is now maxed out, but you could even maybe try and increase your Quanta here as well. You could, you could even consider using Weather Skeleton Skulls because it increases Quanta more than it increases than anything else does. See that you could use the Crystalline Sea Shelf only increases it by 4. So Arcana is at 100% now. Our Eterna is maxed out at 30. And we can then start to delete these shelves and add Skulls. Arcana is still maxed out. And now our Quanta is getting pretty high as well. So I just deleted another block there and we lost a little bit of Arcana. But we've now got 95% Quanta, 96% Arcana as an example. Now having high quanta and no rectification can be bad. And rectification blocks are interesting. So if we type in rectification, we can see all the blocks over here that give us rectification effects. I wouldn't use the Hartford Shee Shelf. Gives you lots of arcana, but negative five rectification, which makes it bad. <laughs> the seabound rectification shelf, the hellbound rectification shelf, and the end fuse rectification shelf all give you plus five, plus 10, plus 20% respectively. However, these are the only blocks that directly upgrade from one to the next. The sea shelves is you create it separately from the hell shelves. There's no correlation. There's no, it's not like an upgrade process. These are an upgrade process. I would max out your rectification as much as possible at any given stage. Now, as you can see, this is a bit of a pain in the butt to make. You'll need honeycomb. So going out and making some beehive uh, areas or, or whatnot would be good for the honeycomb or in picking up any honeycomb that you find along your journey. You'll need blocks of amethyst for this as well. So you'll need to have found a geode. You'll have wanted to do that to start Ars Nouveau anyway. So hopefully you'll have lots of blocks of amethyst. I had literally stacks by the time I wanted to do this. And you'll need that infused sea shelf to create the shelf of seabound rectification. 
these rectification shelves will take up spaces in here so you will lose quanta and arcana to get these in here but having the rectification in replacing uh, in instead of those is good and as you can see, if you move on to the Hellbound, it requires the Seabound rectification to, to create the Hellbound rectification shelf. So it upgrades from one to the next, which means you want to create at least five of these. And I say five because the final version increases it by 20%, maximum of 100%. So you want to have at least five because you'll have five to start off with. That'll be 25% rectification with the first five. I went straight to the Hellbound because I didn't do this until I was doing the Hell Shelves and Hellbound uh, side, uh, another stuff anyway so the first five then will get you to rectification of 50 percent, and then you'll just directly upgrade those ones to the next version which will get you the full 100 percent. so you don't really need more than five of any of these you can if you want to uh, but five will eventually once you finally upgrade get you to the full 100 percent rectification and 50 percent at the mid game so this here is roughly kind of what my first enchanting setup looked like that i actually started using we have the five Hellbound rectification tables here, putting the rectification up to 50%. And I was trying to max out my Quanta uh, to 100% while having my Arcana as high as percent as possible. So I've got a few Hell Shelves in here still, instead of Glowing Hell Shelves. Most of these are Glowing Hell Shelves. Then you've got the rectification Hell Shelves. And I might try and work towards replacing these even further to increase the Quanta and rectification uh, Quanta and Arcana a little bit higher. If I can replace all of those Hell Shelves with Glowing Hell Shelves, that's going to be going up further. And then what I did is I just maxed out the uh, rec Quanta as high as I could using some Skulls. So we got to 90% Quanta with this setup. My setup was slightly different, but this is kind of roughly what it looked like. We got to 90-ish percent Quanta, maxed out Eterna for that stage, high Qu uh, Arcana at 72, and as high as possible rectification without using more than five blocks. And this now allows us to do enchantments up to level 60. It will consume three levels at level 60. And where it says there, raw XP costs 27 levels, that is the XP cost if you were to be from level 0 to level 27. Because obviously at level 60, three levels is a lot more experience than at level 0. So this is 27 levels from zero, level 0 to level 27, but it costs three levels from 60 down to 57. Now, if we enchant this, it says Knowledge of the Ages 1. That's quite an expensive enchant. That's why it's just Knowledge of the Ages 1. If we click this, we should get... There we go. Fire Aspect 3, Smite 7, Knockback 3, Melding, Life Mending, and Knowledge of the Ages 1. So, you can see there the effect that the Quanta um, had, as well as the Arcana. That, I mean, that was one enchant. That was, and it's a buttload of stuff. And this is why it's super, super powerful. Now, I would not enchant straight onto gear. Because of things like the quanta and the high variance of potential enchants being completely random, you don't want to put something on your weapon by accident that you don't want. You want to be able to decide what goes on your weapon. So moving on to the next stage of the video, this is where it comes down to enchanting cleverly. The way that I did things was utilizing tomes. So these tomes, if you put in tome here, you'll get a bunch of different tomes. Tomes of helmets, tomes of others, tomes of chest plates tools, weapons, bows, etc. Right? Now, these tomes can be enchanted just like a book can. So we put all these in here, you know, we'll get enchants, random enchants can go on a book. These will act in the same way. However, they'll only take enchants for that specific thing. So Tome of Helmets will take things for helmets. Tome of Chests will take things for chests. Tome of Weapons will take things for weapons. As you can see, I made a lot of tomes of weapons because what I was doing is I was getting up to level 60, Again, we want to use our backpack, get up to level 60, take the experience to get to level 60. I know I'm in creative at the moment, but it's the same principle. Do that enchant at level 60, get all the stuff on that book. Then you go back in here, take more levels, get back to the level 60, and then do the next one. Now, this is where the library comes into play. The library block is quite expensive to make. It takes four ender chests, an enchanting table, and four infused hell shelves. There's an upgraded version as well, but you're not going to be able to make that until you get to the end. And honestly, you don't really need to make that one because the first one is super duper pog anyway. But you want to max out everything probably by the end. So this is the one we're going to focus on for now. Once you've crafted that, it will look like this. And essentially, this stores all of your enchants. So when you've done your enchanting, say this book, I've done this the enchanting on these two books. I got a lot of random stuff. I just put these straight in here. And it just saves all of the enchants that were on there. 
and now I can pull these enchants out at will. So say, for example, I wanted to make a weapon, and I wanted to make sharpness. I would just click this a bunch of times, and I can then pull out a sharpness 7 book. I can put it back in. There's no... It, it's exact values. You can pull things out and put things in at will, and there's you don't lose anything by doing that. I can shift-click this to bring out the maximum value. Now, you'll notice that sharpness can go up to 8. This will only allow you to pull out a 7. You can only pull out one level below the maximum level for any given enchant. But you can also put on multiple books. Multiple enchants. So now I've got sharpness 7 and looting 6. So I can put as many things onto this as I want. I can get scavenger. So now I've got sharpness, looting, and scavenger. In Dawncraft, you can combine sharpness with one other damage increasing thing. I didn't in my playthrough because I didn't know which one would be best, but I reckon smite will probably be best. So I could add smite to this as well, and it will go on the weapon. Just to show you that really quickly, just to confirm, you see if I put this on here, it does say sharpness, looting, scavenger, and smite. Now, normally you'd want to do the one, two, four, eight method of enchanting, like put the first book on, then combine two books and put that on, two books and put that on, then combine four books and put that on to be the most uh, XP efficient. But honestly, I don't think you really need to do that because of the system. I would just create this one and this will have one level below the maximum for all those enchants. And then you just go ahead and create another one with those same enchants on it. So you get the sharpness, the looting, the scavenger, etc., etc. Slap on the first book. Slap on the second book. It'll, <laughs> you, you'll have a lot of experience by this time. You should do anyway. You can farm experience with the wither or you can use the guy that I made to get a lot of experience. And then it really doesn't matter how efficiently you do this, in my opinion. But there, you can do this more efficiently if you want to. So now we've got a really strong enchanted weapon. Obviously, you, there's loads of more things that you can add on there as well. You can add knockback, fire aspect, etc., etc. And then you can do all the same with your armors as well. So you could make a protection one. You can get protection. I don't actually have that much protection available in here, but you can get you can pull out your protection five. Then you can add your thorns. Then you can add your unbreaking. You know, and do that for your armor. So to recap, I'm basically just using these tomes in here, looking for the things that I want and certain things. So I don't want, really want life mending. Respiration five. Sure, I could take that. So I'll take I'll take that, and I'll get a bunch of other stuff with that as well. And then I'll put in the weapon. Melding, don't want that. Bow, punch two, don't want that. Tool, melding, don't want that. Boots, stable footing, don't want that. Legs, projectile protection six. I could maybe want that, so I'll grab that. I'll get a bunch of other stuff with it as well. Put in the weapon. Scavenger one, I do want that, so I'll take that. Do, do a bunch of this, and then you just shove them all in here. And then you create absolute god-tier weapons and armor. Now, as I think the final thing for us, this video has dragged on a long time. I know there's a lot to talk about. Hopefully it's been understood so far. And I now want to finally talk about the pretty much ideal end game setup. Honestly, I don't think you really need to go this far because you can already, as I just showed, you can already create pretty much the best enchanted things possible with even just a setup like this or, or like I showed you down there because the library just makes it so OP. However, if you really want to optimize and make the best setup possible, let's talk about that. The Draconic End Shelf here is pretty much the only shelf that's going to allow you to get to the maximum of 50 Eterna. And these are fairly expensive to make. You need the End Shelf. Uh, Dragon's Breath is required to even make that. And then you'll need the Dragon's Head plus Ender Pearls to make that. It's not too bad, to be fair. And you'll either be using End Shelves or Pearlescent End Shelves. Probably Pearlescent End Shelves will be the most efficient to increase your quanta and your arcana levels. And you can see that gets to a max Eterna of 40. So first things first, you're going to want to start with your five rectification and fuse rectification blocks because that you want to have that 100% rectification. You'll need the purple blocks, the health bound rectification, the ones you probably crafted earlier, and blocks of amethyst. So we can start with those. I believe you're going to need at least two draconic end shelves because these shelves can get you to 40 max Eterna and then you'll need the plus 10 extra from these two to get you to the max of 50. So we use 14 of the pearlescent end shelves. So that's 14 pearlescent end shelves. And then we'll use the two draconic end shelves here. And we now have Eterna 50, Quanta 85, Arcana 100%, Rectification 100%. 
And then we can literally just throw in anything to increase the quanta just a little bit more. We can get a couple of Wither Skulls if you want. So as you can see, you can max this out without having to use the full setup. So, you know, you could have, instead of all of these amazing, you know, end game pearlescent shelves, you could be using some of your Hellbound shelves here as well. So it could look like something like this as an example. You have less of the pearlescent end shelves, more glowing hell shelves. Long story short, it's actually not that hard to max out the enchanting table as much as possible. However, there's one thing that we haven't talked about, which is the clues. Having more clues gives you better visibility of the enchants you'll get, so we might as well use some shelves of sight or shelves of masterful sight to fill the gaps here. As you can see, these are quite expensive to make as well, with the infused hell shelves, spyglass, and eyes of ender, and then these ones requiring netherite and emeralds and potions of night vision. But if you get a couple of these in here, you now throw a, throw a few of these in here, and you will be able to see a lot more information when you're looking to a chant. As you can see, it shows us six now. We have enchanting clues nine. So we could see up to nine enchants. This is only going to give us six, but that's six insane enchants. I mean, we're up to Bane of Arthropods nine as an example, looting seven. And you'll need to have 100 levels on you to be able to do that enchant. It'll take three levels at level 100, which is 35 levels if it were to be from zero to 35. Holy crap, that was a lot of information. It wasn't necessarily delivered in the most perfect of ways in terms of the... Uh, I was trying to deliver this information in a linear way that would be useful throughout your journey in Dawncraft and in a an applicable way to the game. There are some apo uh, apotheosis enchanting module guides that probably delve a little bit deeper and, and provide the information in maybe a clearer or more precise way. But I was trying to build this uh, guide in a way that would deliver that information that's in, a, in a, an applicable and useful way to you through your Dawncraft journey. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully it was very valuable to you. Again, this is also my own opinion in terms of things like the seashells you know, or lack of use of them. I only use, you know, I only used, I don't think I even used any apart from for the rectification ones as an example. Um, if you guys have any additional comments, information that you want to provide, or any things that I missed, any tips that I missed, anything like that, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you have any questions, uh, also put those in the comments, I'll be happy to answer. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, consider subscribing, and I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Take care. Some nuts guy. Grab gaming by the nuts.